Welcome to Warblog. Today I'm going to look at the Babara to Kasi game. Essentially, this is um, a new game that I sort of developed after looking at this link. I had not seen this map before, so it's French, but it indicates that after the um, this initial opening, they actually moved along this way. So this is Mabara to Kasi. So this represents that. But also, what I didn't see was on the Wikipedia page. And I think this is new. These are all the battles, um, you know, in the Uganda War. Um, so obviously, there's nothing at Kasi, but there was, say, something there at Lake George, um, a Bushenyi. So there's the Mabari situation, but also all these other places. So I do intend to do scenarios for these places as well later. So we've got Jinja. I think we've got the march on Kampala. We've got the uh, the Masaka situation, the Lukea situation. So we've got that sort of you know that counter attack down there and we've got all this stuff down here so bit by bit increasing the scope of um what what will blog sort of covers um i think that i was looking at it earlier see that's what we're dealing with at the moment but here's the the opening now I don't know the exact dates because it doesn't say the dates, um, but what you can see here is the there's um, Mabara there, so and there's the 206th Brigade there, sort of marching this way. Um, so it's a continuation of that really, it's just an extension. Um, I'm going to make this quite quick, quick, mainly because I have actually just spent an hour talking absolute crap, and, and I, I do tend to do that. Um, and so I'm just going to ignore that and do this video again, uh, but I'm going to do it quite quickly, so to speak. So basically, um, I think it's interesting because it's open terrain. You've got sort of decisions as to whether to go this way or that way. Now, if you look at that map, obviously there was some sort of battle either here or around here. Um, and it makes sense, really, to sort of consider that they might have gone this way in order to get this road, as opposed to going across this otherwise uncrossable river at this singular bridgehead but they do have engineers so they could in theory create a bridge there but no matter how i look at it it just seems that this would be the better route um but it's not defined here they go this way so presumably they send a task force here there's a battle there and then they come back down this way and you know that's how they get that bridge opening that route to facilitating the general advance along that way um obviously we're dealing with the move from mabara to kasi so um but in theory there's another scenario in here for the uh Bushenyi and the lake george situations which i'll probably cover because i like that um so what i did though i because i want to be basically move this way I, in the, my strategy is the initial move will be to consolidate this area here but because I'm essentially I'm going to move this way, get my drawing tool out. This is white. I want to move this way and take that. And then once I've got that, then I'll start moving in concert this way. And I think I'm going to do once once I've got this area here, and possibly this area, once I've got that. I can consider whether I go this way or this way. So, in the first instance, here's my artillery here. I got really good results on this last time, so I don't think I'm going to get such good results this time. Oh, well, okay, well, that sort of makes up for it. And I use all my air power. I also came to, conclusion, came to the conclusion that I want to. I did much better last time. I was at 0.6 last time, at 0.5, so not too bad. But I want to reduce the. Uh, I'm going to change, I think, the um, the way units are fatigued and recover, so that there are steps, not so much literal steps, as in wargaming. Currently, the situation is, for example, he's at five. 
depressions, which means you subtract 2 from that, he can recover down to 3.1 maximum. He will never get better than 3.1. I'm going to change that now so that there are three steps. So that if, uh, basically, at this moment, he at 5, he could recover always. No, he's, he's at 5.1, so he's over 5. But up to 5, you could recover down to 2. Uh, between 5 and 7, you could recover to 3. And between 7 and 10, you could recover to 4. This would be, I think, better, because if you get to, say, 10, you'll only be able to recover to 8, which is still rubbish. And I think I'm going to do that. But I, I spent a lot more time talking about it, and, and the, but that was the conclusion. Uh, whether I do it today or some other time, I'll totally forget. I don't really know. But what I try to do is to move these units out. But it accidentally moved the infantry. Okay, so we've done okay this time. We got a DE last time. Yes, so we're sort of on par. Exactly the same situation. A little bit better because last time I moved the infantry accidentally. Accidentally, so now I've taken that. So I'm in the position I want to be. So we can go on to the next turn. I didn't get onto the next turn last time. I just went into this rant. Uh, lasted 50 minutes, um, and I'm sure you don't want to hear that. So. I'm always a bit loath to destroy content, so I've set that video as private. Uh, but here we go. So now we're the Ugandan player. Now I think the Ugandan player, I talked a lot about how, how excited I am about the scale and size of the map. I'm not going to go into that. It's quite hard for me to distinguish what I've already said. Um, but I think you've got to distinguish between, well, we decide which routes you're going to play on. Also, I pointed out this. If you look at this situation here, these units, there's a lot of artillery in there. It's very significant. They're in a place called uh, Kuhura. Uh, if you look at this map, you'll see that Kuhura is there. So to some extent, that artillery is there. And in the grand sense, you might say, well, they're going to come down this way towards Kampala. And I think it's interesting, really, to consider the bigger picture and how things slot in, because in this game, you'd say, well, they're going to come this way. But, you know, you might sort of sit there and say, well, actually, they start there. Fantastic. But there's a 80 percent chance they're going to go this way. And so if it was a proper scenario game, you would say, well, there's an 80 percent chance they're not actually going to stay there. Um, and then they walk off the board. But, you know, so you've got to consider these things and you could role play that. Um, this this location is not on the map actually, so I went through this in the last video. But you'll see that that is Kahi, but this is uh, Keshongi there, but that is the junction there. So I think we got I think we got Kihura, Kihura and Kashongi. Kihura and there's Kashongi, but obviously whatever's at this junction is not there, or is it? Kahihi. Kahura. So, but the thing is, the situation in geography is, is there. So, again, we're looking at that sort of part of the map. So, when you consider that, it also makes it quite interesting. So, these units could all be sort of possibly, you know, for example, we've got a little sort of, you know, almost a, 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 a battalion there, sort of could be en route to um, Kampala. But in this situation, we're just focusing on this game. So, the thing is, I can't really decide what I want to do. But I think key is to preserving this artillery. Now, we don't appear to have any air defences. I wonder if that's just because I forgot to put them in. I think I did. I think we need some air defences. Can't use them, so let's see how far we can get along this road. That's it.
Well, I'm going to try and push him as far along this road as I can with the intention of building some kind of obstacle. Here, I'm going to build some earthworks there. I'm going to build some earthworks there as well. I'm just doing this because you just sort of want to get them to, to have done something before they become inundated and it's difficult to do anything. But I want to move these units across this way. Leave the tanks there. See, I, 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 don't, I really don't know what to do. I'm, I'm un, unable really to think of a strategy um, because I'm all over the place I was quite relaxed before and then I went off on this rant and it sort of upset me a bit in, in the sort of sense that I'm now not in that calm I, I, I thought oh I'll get up I'm going to do the day of work some stuff I'll have a quick look go at this relax bring me into the pace of, of the day and I completely lost it, and I'm beginning to wonder where the day's gone now. It's six o'clock. What happens when you get up at three o'clock? So I thought what I sort of want to do is to retreat and form a line here and a line here. See, if I could, I really want to do those ref refined rules now. Just got to figure out how to do it. I think I'm what, <laughs> what you didn't see me doing there was like putting my face in my hand and having a really hard think of the code and then coming up with a solution. And it's like, mm, hang on, do I have access to the code in my head? Mm, maybe I do. Um, but this will be able to recover down to a four. And I think once you start looking at that, and I made a big deal of, of how that works, because I don't think these units should actually necessarily die so easily. I think it, there should be a lot more to sort of bring in units back to regroup them. And I think that that is actually going to be quite an elegant solution to this. I'm actually starting to get warm up to the idea. I was thinking initially of reducing the way that units um, check for morale. Um, But I think this is going to be a much better way of doing it. Now, we've got, let's see how far we can get back. I did that. It seems to be, sometimes it does that, it uses the wrong one. That's ironic. Why is he moving as fast as motorised units? Oh god. So you can move two through bush, it's quite quite fast. I'm going to put one this way, one this way.
see the limiting factor is this artillery I really want to I'm going to put some air defense in here as well I think I just forgot okay so that's that so essentially what the Tanzanian player now has to face not so much has to face but the situation is that the Ugandans have not formed an advanced defensive line but they've retreated so how to react to that um, it's I think the situation has slightly changed in that regard but these are all infantry so we're not going to move very fast so I think what we've got to decide is well if they are moving back in that capacity what are their defensive lines going to look like on either side so we can almost assume maybe we can almost assume maybe that that is going to be the divide of units because they've moved that one that way and this one this way so we're going to have one two three four five six six units along this line and we're going to have one two three four. well these these units look as though they're moving this way so we're going to have nine so I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve but a lot of that's artillery and this artillery would probably be somewhere there serving that sort of radius so I think we've got obviously lots of choices but maybe three we move everything one way everything another way or a division between the two of 50 50 40 60 yeah, and this is where I'm not really thinking I think if you were a strategic commander you would spend a little more time considering things um, possibly what would you be thinking you'd be thinking well what sort of what is the battle going to look like here and what's it going to look like here and I think no matter how I look at it it's going to be this way and that is why I think when you look at the um, the Wikipedia map there was a battle at Lake George there there was also a battle here we haven't put obviously we haven't put bush any in there but that was probably why we got the battle at Lake George um, for the singular issue that this is probably where they tried to cross and I'm going to play the same strategy so I'm going to try and put a token effort this way and the, the vast bulk of my troops this way So, are there any implications to that strategy? I mean, is moving quickly going to be better? Now, I think if we can move quickly, we might be able to cut this artillery off because they're only going to be moving quite slowly. So, if we can get there sooner rather than later, because the road network between Kazo and anywhere else, so this is a significant place. Come on. Ibanda, which has now been entrenched, is a significant place. The sooner we can get there, the better. Now, he's on 8.1. What I think I'm going to do is instead of firing my artillery this turn, I'm going to move it. Where can his infantry units go? Okay, we'll leave him there for the time being because I want to move this unit ahead like that. And this guy is going to move this way as part of my token force going this way. Now, do I want to just attack him? I think I will. Mm. 
or we can bring the engineers in support there. Oh, look at that. The 7 to 1. Still alive, though. But he could possibly regroup, you see, under my new rules. Well, obviously, they don't exist yet. So that's everything sort of moved. We've got the scope for him moving one more. And we've got our air power. And I think we've just got to go for this artillery. It pains me to do it because I feel like I'm cheating. There's no air defence. And I think we're just going to blow it all up eventually. Yeah, 7.5. Again, the artillery would be able to recover, and so I think that's an interesting set of rules, actually. The thing to do there would be to actually disperse it. That's the thing. Maybe keep them all separate. That would have helped. Right. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. Okay, so now... We've dispersed them, at least. At least that'll make it a little harder. Right, where else do I want to create some sort of defensive line? Their engineers are only threes, but these engineers are sixes. Still trying to move these this way. And move these this way. Definitely want to try and get him away. I think we're going to move this. Mechanized unit up. Let's hold there. Some earthworks in there. The nice thing about earthworks and also mines is they cause the units to stop instantly. So that's everything sort of moved. We're still str really struggling to get to Ibanda before the artillery can sort of get in this direction, if possible. But it's looking quite dense here. I mean, fighting through that is not going to be simple. We sort of come to an impasse here, which means these units are probably going to be able to sort of do what they want. So fighting through Cairo is going to be the key thing, really. Now we've brought our artillery forward, we've only got two units, but it might be worth bombarding Cairo, Cairo. It would be nice if we could do that. Especially if we can get some sort of route. Just 
pass straight through. No effect, it's not what we need. Five. Okay. I'm going to try an infantry attack. Should be about four to one, three to one. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to get a DR, so I could just pass these straight through and start the attack here. But that attack failed, that advance failed. I'm going to split these. It's worth 6.5. But what I'm going to do And sit him there and hopefully I'll be able to at least possibly threaten this sort of open flank. I really want to sort of get to Ibanda quickly. Quite interesting actually. It's a shame I really don't want to do much more because I've always wasted an hour talking rubbish. But this is quite exciting from a strategic point of view. Now what do they want to do? The engineers are going to take a while to sort of gear up. I'm going to leave them there. Hmm. interesting because we have committed our units this way we might want to hold them where they are maybe even bring these guys back
Okay, that's that. So I think the Tanzanians have got to consider their, their overall strategy, but also the, the, the changing situation on this. So they, they even didn't move. So, you know, is this actually a weakened flank? I mean, can we suddenly swing this way? Probably not. We've got a little front line there, and they're managing to push things over. We're losing the ability to, en masse, take out the artillery. You know, we've got four units here. We could swing this motorized stuff down this way now. Or we could use it to reinforce continually along this line. I'd like to take out this artillery section here. One on each, I think. Yes. Okay. Yes, artillery is vulnerable to air attack in this game. Right, I did bring my artillery forward, and it's still in range, I think. Got him. That was good. It's not perfect, because now I can shoot all this stuff north. Now that would be a battle. See, I didn't mean to do that. Do I attack there? I think not. So it's definitely a game of manoeuvre and strategic decision making. I'm going to give it one more turn. in the wrong way. We're still sat there, a bunch of idiots.
We'll take that place. Artillery here, I think. See if we can do some damage. Okay, let's let's hold there. I sort of want to take this out. Okay, so we've got the Battle of Kabiwoi about to take place, which should be a two to one. About a two to one. An exchange. It wasn't a comfortable battle. It wasn't something I thought, oh, this is going to win. It is sort of feel that keeping some pressure down there would be useful. I think I'm going to support that, the extension of that, of these units. I'm going to leave that battle. Pushed him back. Right. I believe it at that because I got things to do. I just like to stress, you know, that the whole thing about war blog is that you can, you know, the whole idea is that you can say take a game like this and you can play it as far as this. I mean, you can actually play this. You know, once once you've got a game started, it go into your my game section and you can start it again later. But the whole idea is, you know, I spent 39 minutes playing that, and I think that. You know, it's key that you can play little games like this, get a real sense of strategy, strategy, a strategic accomplishment, um, without committing entire days to it. Because a lot of these games, they just computer games, they just pure art, and they just take too long. And um, I think this is a finely balanced game. It's you know, it's got the sort of the it's got the geographic scope many of them don't um but you know in its own right i think it's a good example of its type because we've got this continual decision making of sending units this way and that way a decision that is not readily addressable and it's causing almost a paralysis of these units here in the center as to which way they go and they've sort of maybe done the right thing in holding and not going back because now if these units have sent these this way you know, essentially this is just a holding force. So these managed to get back here, but there's only actually four units. Then there's four companies to hold this entire thing. And now they might just sit there, but we've got engineers, you see. So in theory, we could actually say, well, we're going to actually commit these engineers this way. And that should have been maybe a, a thing to do right at the very beginning, because they're still a way away. But with six, they could probably get there quite happily. Um, and we could just bridge anywhere. 
but the only thing I'm going to change on this, so I'm going to think about doing this morale thing, uh, this de depression recovery adjustment. But I'm going to add some air defences for the U for the Ugandans, definitely in Kasi, um some down here and some on the front line. So I'm going to add three air defence units because I think that that would make it a little. Not so much more balance, but I think it would add the 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 integrity of having air defence capabilities in the game, which would affect your consideration as to where you deployed them to the, you know, to this sort of r r river front or to this this side, you, you know, or whether you kept them forward for defence. And I think the artillery becomes very very sort of vulnerable to airstrikes. Um, and I'm not sure how that balance works, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that, and um, I'll speak to you later. Cheerio. Yeah.